Good morning, everyone. I think we'll get started. So if you want to find a seat, we'll um, get started with our presentation from the Sierra Club on the Inflation Reduction Act and the rebates and tax credits that will be available for you. So um, I'm Donna Steinwan. I'm part of the sustainability team here. And we've got Lynette and Elaine and Lana and Anne as well here this morning. And then while I have your attention, I'm going to do a quick plug for next week. We are going to be talking about the Climate Action Handbook. And these are things that you can do to help mitigate uh, climate change. And some are easy, some are a little more challenging. But I bet we all do at least one thing for climate, and that is vote, right? So if, we, if you're a voter, you're already working on climate change. So great news. So our two uh, speakers here from the Sierra Club, we've got Nick Baker and Don Georgiev. And I think we'll just take it away there. All right. Okay. Good morning. Um, Whoa. <laughs> How's that? Is that? Is the volume about right? OK. Uh, welcome. Let me mention a, something before we start. Was the Star Tribune science section today had all sorts of articles on climate-related issues. And I didn't have time to read all of them, but it was very good. And I would encourage those of you who subscribe to the Star Tribune to take a look at it. OK, the IRA. I told my wife I was doing a presentation on the IRA. And she said, what do you, she said, what do you know about retirement programs? I said, no, 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 it's the Inflation Reduction Act. OK, what do you know about inflation? OK, the uh, Inflation Reduction Act is a real misnomer. It has nothing to do with inflation. Uh, but inflation was a hot topic at the time, so they had to throw a name in. OK, uh, are any of you familiar with Sierra Club? Wonderful. Could, could somebody tell you, tell us what you know about us? Come on, Pete. <laughs> He's the one person here whose name I know, so. <laughs> Pardon? Nothing, but only to know that you, you are here to speak on it. OK. I see us as being, in a way, two organizations. And one is sponsoring outdoors activities, ranging from camping trips for little kids to hiking trips for seniors and everyone in between. To my knowledge, we are the largest organization providing the service. But then there's the other side of it, which is the advocacy, which is my main interest. And we do things like this. We do a lot of lobbying. Uh, we are active in what's happening with the Rondo development and so on. So that is an equally important part of what we do, I believe. OK. <laughs> Got it. OK, and this is what we're about. Um, yeah, I can't read the screen from here, but those are our values. <laughs> OK. All right. Uh, we're going to be talking about electrification because that has such a, a major impact on emissions, energy use, and so on, and pollution. Then we'll be talking about rebates. Um, and as it says there, people below a certain income level will be eligible for $14,000 in rebates. It's like, here's $14,000 in your bank account. Do solar panels, do a heat pump, it's yours. Then there are also tax credits, and the tax credits already exist. They're not income-based and um, cover just about every home improvement uh, act that you can imagine. OK, then finally, uh, we're going to have some fiction. 
which is the timeline for these benefits. <laughs> if you know when it's going to happen, let us know so in the next presentation. <laughs> okay. Okay, the main purpose, as I said, of the IRA was to fight, clim fight climate change, but a big second purpose is that all of the activities like installing a heat pump, all of those lower energy costs. For example, in the case of solar panels, some people have installed them with a home equity loan, but what they save in electricity is more than enough to pay off that loan. And you're going to be hearing a lot about heat pumps because they're such an important part of the process. But a heat pump will save you a lot over a natural gas um, furnace. So it just makes sense for all sorts of reasons. But the tax credits, the rebates will help with the upfront cost. Okay. And by the way, anytime you have a question, please speak up. We'll set aside some time at the end for that purpose, but please feel free to ask anytime. Okay. Okay, so uh, so um, everybody wins with electrification. So so the, as as Nick was just saying, the the it lowers your energy bills, improves improves the value of your home. But I think the biggest reason for all these things is that this this bill, massive bill was passed, and and if people don't take advantage of these of these benefits, we're not going to get any any further on, on 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 fighting climate change. And and I think that's probably the. Um, what a lot of you think that are even bothering to come to this, but you save money, but also it's, it's we, you do it primarily for the in, in environment. Um, next slide, please. So this is just what what the average home energy use is, where where most of your money goes when you're when you're um, uh, uh, when you're, you're uh, paying your electrical bills and and your heating bills. Uh, for lighting, but you can, as you can see, heating and air conditioning um, are, are number one. Probably that varies from what part of the country you're in, um, but this is this is based on Minnesota. Um, uh, appliances, um, uh, uh, he water heating, lighting, and electronics. Um, and uh, um, the the one of the things that is is covered in the IRA is to have an energy audit that would be that would al allow you to figure out where where your where your more, more of your cost is going and where of your more of your bill is and where where it's most economic for you to make the the um, energy use changes. So next slide. So the thing about that, I'm my my mission is to talk about the tax credits and I, it, they are available now. Um, as Nick said, the state um, is, 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 has to get together um, and make a plan for people to do the rebates. So the rebates, you walk in, you, get your, you, get, you buy your appliance, and immediately the, 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 uh, the, the uh, cost of it is less. These are things that you, the tax credits, you obviously come off your, your taxable um, income. Um, so you don't get it immediately, but, it, but um, you, and, then, and obviously, just missed the one for for for, for now, <laughs> but um, but but the but it is something. It will be base. It is basically cash in um, cash in your pocket eventually, um, as less less taxes and um, and and it is now. Um, the state is a federal level um, program, um, so the the state um, does it. So let's go through some of the details on that. Let me ma mention one thing about the tax cuts, and this is kind of a downside, which is they're not re refundable. So let's say if you have a $4,000 tax credit, but you only owe 2000 the 2000 will be negated, but the other two are lost, which is an unfortunate part of it, but sorry to interrupt. No, it's fine. So, so um, these are some of the things that are available to get, to get through for, for to get tax credits on. And um, uh, uh, the, as I mentioned already, the home energy audits. So, so um, they cover $150 of that for um, for somebody to come in and, and tell you what what you what should be how, how leaky your windows are and 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 uh, if whether your insulation is working and so on. Um, electrical panel, 
Um, the uh, Let me skip down to windows and doors. Um, I have a little bit of experience with that. Um, they they, they, they um, basically have um, uh, 250 per door, up to 500, and then windows up to 600. The kind of the trick on that is that they have to be um, qualified for the um, uh, Energy Star um, uh, uh, program. So they have to be uh, energy efficient. And that's a little bit tricky. Um, um, I, we just actually had some um, re, um, a company come out and look for, to replace some of our windows, and they were not necessarily offering the ones that were the Energy Star credit. So if you do do this, make sure that you ask about that. Otherwise, you're not, they're not going to be covered on these tax rebates. And apparently, it's a little easier down south on, to get these qualified than it is up here. I guess it's harder to make them energy efficient if, it's, if you're doing heating rather than air conditioning. Obviously, you're doing both with the, with the windows, but um, so the the energies in, indoors and that and and with um, um, uh, the uh, another big one is the the heating system, um, the heat pumps, um, either for the whole house heating system, or for um, for the for just for your water heater. Um, you can go either way. Um, it, yeah. Well, may, you, Nick, you understand the heat pumps more than I do. Why yeah. don't you Why don't you talk no, they, about heat? They pumps? are separate. On demand, <laughs> there's a water system that you're referring to that instead of heating the water and letting it sit there, it heats it as you need it. Uh, heat pumps are an entirely different thing. They're uh, they cover heating the house and cooling the house. Exactly. That, that he, yeah. But it, there is another one, I think, that in Europe that, that they have that is, it's right there and it's on demand. Yeah, I've seen those too. I, that is not the same thing as this, yeah. And I, and I don't think there's any coverage on those for some reason. Maybe they're not all that efficient. Um, the heat pump water pu uh, heaters are more, uh, two to three times more efficient. Um, uh, and. And and uh, let's see what else is up there. Um, attic insulation, wall insulation, um, and then a, um, a new electrical panel that be more efficient. So what what you do? I mean, uh, one, uh, one way to do these tax rebates is that you you do a supplemental. This looks like the forms that you're all familiar with. Uh, this, you put it, on, you hook it on to your. Um, your, your 1040 or whatever, um, and you can add these things up to a total of um, uh, 3,200 per year. You can also, um, and, and uh, uh, 1,200 of that is for windows, doors, insulation, electrical, and, um, and then the 2,000 cap is for heat pumps and heat pump water heaters. Um, so you, you're obviously it's not going to pay for you know the, the whole thing or even the majority, um, but it, it does pay for a, a considerable amount of of the of the of, of of this. I think you can also kind of put some of it's like if you do it in 2024, I think you can maybe push some of it ahead as well for the next year to take the credit. But I'm not positive about that. Um, so I think the next slide I think is you. Oh, um, don't, don't finish up. Um, this is, is electrical vehicles. And that one, um, and, and solar panel. The, this, again, is a 30%, and this is not capped like the other things are at the 3,200. 3, um, so 30% of home solar um, gets covered. Um, again, it's a, it's a form of 30. Um, now, the, the electrical vehicles, it's a little trickier. Um, because um, they have, there's some criteria for the le electrical vehicles, and um, uh, the it, you have to look to see which ones are available, which ones are are, are covered. Um, and they have to be assembled in the U.S. They have to have um, they have to be less than a certain costs, eighty thousand for a, a SUV or a truck, and fifty five thousand for a car, um, and then. Um, you, you, there are some income um, limits on this, $300,000 um, for a, a married couple and, and 150 
for an individual. Um, so if you make more than 300000 you can't do this. Um, yeah? Either. Either, yeah, yeah. Let me make you repeat. Hybrids in there too. Plug in hybrid. Yeah. Plug in hybrid. Not and the others. And one th yeah. nice thing about the uh, vehicle tax credit is that it's per car. So if you go out and buy two electrical vehicles tomorrow, you can take $15,000 in credit. That's hmm. that's not know. my understanding. I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's easy to look up. Um, and so up, to you get up to four thousand dollars for new, and up to uh, uh, I'm sorry, sorry for used and seventy five hundred up for new, um, as far as credit goes. Um, Geothermal, I don't know an awful lot about, and it's pretty expensive. I don't think it's very commonly used. It's different than, than heat pumps. Heat pumps are kind of look like air conditioners. They're right up there on the top. Geothermal is, is a pretty big hole, my understanding is, and fairly expensive. Um. And the main difference between geothermal and a regular heat pump is the heat pump takes heat from the air and uses that to heat the house. Geothermal takes it from underground. Um, I don't know a lot about geothermal. I don't see a lot of reason to get that instead of a regular heat pump because it is very expensive. I don't know. Okay, let's talk about rebates. Uh, of course, the difference as Don said, a rebate you get right now. So you, uh, you're not waiting until next spring. Uh, Once they go through. Right, right. Which raises the next question. Does, yes, ma'am. And you just summed it up nicely. If... Oh. Yeah. Yeah. If at the end of this, you're really confused about when they'll be available. It means you've been paying attention. Uh, they're now talking late 2024, early 2025. I have heard, and I, you know, don't hold me to this, that the administration is pushing the states to roll it out by this summer. Who knows? The only thing I can guarantee is it'll probably be during our lifetimes. Depending on. <laughs> okay, next slide, please. Okay. Um, here are a couple of the rebate programs that will be in process. And this is the income limit. It's based on the area median income. I think that's the right term, AMI, which is what the average person in the Twin Cities, or uh, pardon me, average household makes. So this low income, let's say you have a family of two, you're counted as low income if you're making less than 75, 750. And then your middle income up to 149,000. So I was pleasantly surprised the limits were a lot higher than I thought because ordinarily if it's tagged to the poverty level, that's a whole bunch less. So a lot of people will be able to take part in these rebates. As I mentioned, uh, if you're low income, you get $14,000.
if you're middle income, it's half that, I believe. Don? Have you don't get the full rebates. And I, I think it's half, but it is partial. Next slide, please. Okay, first program is HEAR. And uh, these are the rebates that you're eligible for. Uh, the most notable to me is good old heat pumps, $8,000. And you can add the tax credit onto that. Um, the cost of a heat pump, I've asked manufacturers, or not manufacturers, but installers, and w in particular one owner of a company that does this, and asked him how much they are, and he said somewhere between six and 20,000. I think a major difference would be the, obviously the size of your home, but there are other factors, and the quality of the equipment, the com complexity of installing it, a lot of other factors that I'm not familiar with. Uh, sir, did you find out about the car? You mean tax credit? Okay. Right. So I was half right. Yeah. I, if you're going to go out and buy two electric vehicles, I can grab Probably not real you. common. <laughs> Okay. Uh, next, please. I just want to make a comment that this, these things can be added. The federal stuff can be added onto this, so you can do both. Right. So, for example, with the heat pump, you're looking at ten thousand dollars. Yes. Uh, these are all the rebate programs. Federal money, state administration. Okay, next please. Okay, now you have the homes rebates program, which I think is kind of weird, frankly, because the amount you get is based on how much the uh, improvement affects the energy efficiency of your home. So, for example, oh, <laughs> Not, yeah, I know, I know. Um, so, for example, you get a two thousand dollar refund, if a rebate, if you have a twenty percent improvement. Something that has me confused is how they're going to measure the improvement. Yeah. This one is complicated. Once again, if you don't understand, it means you're paying attention. Um, next, please. Yeah. No. No, it's a, uh, what I was saying earlier about the uncertainty uh, is true of both rebate programs, unfortunately. The tax credits are, but none of the rebates are yet. Okay, and uh, let's see, it's getting moved up one slide. In addition to the tax credits, there are these rebates, as Don was saying, uh, which are significant. You know, for a seat pump, $4,000, but it cannot be used in conjunction with the other program. At least that's what they're saying now. Yeah, with the income we showed earlier. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, next, please. Okay. We'll, we'll be passing something out that has a link uh, that will, 
gender, household size, income, and so on. And it tells you what you're eligible for, how much you can get. And Pete, you were showing me something? No, but that does the same thing. Yeah, this one is just a website. And uh, once again, okay, I would encourage you to look. Um, when I looked, I was pleasantly surprised. And there might be a good surprise. Again, the income levels are higher than I had expected. Did you have a question? Yeah. Yes, sir. And I bought an EV three years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I no regrets whatsoever. I just wish they had the tech. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Next slide, please. And, okay, yeah, middle income, you're eligible for 50% of the rebates. And as noted, you can use them you can combine them with tax credits, but you cannot combine both uh, rebate programs. And hopefully by the time they come out, well, I've got to believe that by the time they come out, it'll be more clear to figure out which one benefits you more. That's an optimistic statement, isn't it? Okay, next slide, please. So this one is just some quick examples. Um, Next slide, please. So this this family, um, uh, the uh, family of four in Minneapolis, own their own home, have an income of uh, ninety three thousand household income of ninety three thousand, and so they're 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 under they're uh, under eighty they're in the middle income group, so they're just under the eighty percent of the average um, um, income. And they they can get up to fourteen thousand dollars in the here rebates. So those those are the ones that aren't the rebates that aren't out here yet. And um, they um, the, the uh, and then the next slide, please, is another example of people that are re, uh, retired, own their own home. They have one hundred and forty thousand dollar annual income. They're they're about one hundred and forty percent of the AMA. And they qualify for f up front for four rebates that cover 50% of the eligible costs, so to get $14,000 back. So, um, so uh, obviously everybody would want to put in their own information, um, and and the and the, the 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 criteria are probably going to be the same on these resites, re re on these um, on uh, on on this information when you put the information in, but because it's set by this by the federal uh, government, but the but the actual details are still um, are still pending. Um, but the how much you might qualify. So next slide. So what should you do now? Um, probably think about getting a clean energy audit. Um, and and um, typically, through, I know that the utilities offer this, um, um, and and that would kind of give you an idea where to go. Um, and then, and then let, start. Let me interrupt for one yeah. second. Uh, we've gotten a couple audits for free through various programs. So if you want to audit, start with your utility. But if there's a charge, you might want to look at. For example, there's a good program in Minneapolis, and I'm forgetting its name. But you could mess around with Google and find it. And all their audits are free, so you really shouldn't have to spend money on this. Yeah, for the audit, so they kind of know where you're going to go. Um, and then maybe go into one of those sites and try to see where you could save the most money uh, potentially. Um, and <laughs> number three is is hopefully will be where you really want to go. Um, um, and then and then start not thinking about hiring a contractor. Obviously, that oftentimes those these guys are booked for a long time. <laughs> um, so you might even want to start start thinking about that earlier, because so, because this will be coming through uh, um, soon. I don't think so. No. Yeah. Yeah. But but
but the, obviously for tw the tax incentives would, yeah, for, for, for 2024. Do we have another slide? Maybe next, let's see. Next slide, please. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. So, <laughs> please, questions. Yes, Brent. <laughs> All states. I don't know if they're required. If they're going to participate. Yeah, I, I don't think they are required. Yeah. Um, I just wanted yeah. to ask if all states are required to participate in these programs. I'm thinking they're not. I'm thinking yes. Okay, so we don't, <laughs> okay. We don't know the answer. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, if it like the Medicaid thing? Well, <laughs> yeah, in that, for example, I think if, depending on the latitude states have, that the benefits will be a lot better in Minnesota than in Texas. My apologies to anyone from Texas. Um, yeah. The tax, the tax rebates would, but if you have a home in another state that's not your primary home, it doesn't work. The tax incentives, credits, I'm sorry, not rebates, credits. Yeah. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. I see there's a resource about learning about heat pumps, and that's probably where I should go. But I don't understand heat pumps. Is this a whole system that you, do I have to take out my old system in the house? You don't have to take it, it out, but uh, they, okay, heat pumps are effective to about 10 below. And I talked to one contractor who said he's had them operate to colder than 20 below. But they recommend having a backup, leaving your gas furnace there. So on the rare occasions that you do need more heat, you, you have something. Does that answer your question? Sort of. <laughs> so you leave it your place in place. Complicates it complicates it. Yeah. yeah. You want to know kind of how do they basically work? Both. You know, how okay. much space does it does it take up? And okay. Is down to ten below. It can be outside. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you said only down to thirty degrees. Dramatically. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, once upon a time, it would have made no sense in Minnesota for, and it yeah. seems so counterintuitive that it's zero degrees in Minnesota and you're getting heat out of the air. Yeah. Yeah. But it works. And then conversely, it's putting the warm air back outside during the summer. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Yes, sir. I think that um, I'm a, an EV owner, and I think one of the things the rebates will really help with is just the electrical panel stuff you're talking about. You right. Know, because people, you need to have a, the 240 line or 220 line what, coming into your house. 220. And yeah. I. I pull it into my house, and I was shocked how much it cost. I mean, by it, by calling, I called two electricians, and it was over three thousand dollars to inst install this. Yeah. Oh, for and the for the plug-in. For the box. For the plug -in, right. Oh. I ended up doing it myself. You know, I ordered the wire on the, you know on Amazon, and and it ended up being about maybe seven or eight hundred dollars doing it yourself. So, uh, but. You know, I think that's an important thing to look at because, you know, people buy EVs. And sometimes my understanding is that car manufacturers will actually help you pay for the cost of putting in uh, a panel or a, putting uh, that in. So, yeah, uh, that is one of the tax credits, is electrical. Yeah. 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 It's not required. Same thing. We don't have the uh, charger. Uh, we charge with regular household current. Now, it takes a short lifetime. But, uh, you know, we had an electrician in when we first got the car. And 
due to the configuration of our house, it would have been $1,500, which is not a big deal, but after you just paid X amount for an <laughs> And he said, you're retired, right? You know, I'm at the age where people assume I'm retired instead of asking. <laughs> and he said, try it on regular household current because your car spends a lot more time sitting in the garage than being driven. And we've never had a problem with it. So now, if you're, I'm sorry, if you're commuting regularly, then that may not work for you. I'm sorry. No, nope, that's okay. One of the things that I'll add so with the Inflation Reduction Act, you can also get your electrical box upgraded and get tax credits for that. So as you start to electrify a lot of people, their current box isn't going isn't gonna to be able to do the heat pump, the charging in your garage for your car. So that also is, a, is part of the benefit. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just promote some things that we had last year. Citizens for Sustainability did an outreach at Village Fest. And we put together this, actually, we just printed off this worksheet. It's from Clean Energy Resource Teams, if you're interested. This takes a look at both of those income levels. So if you're in the low income level versus the mid, it shows you if you want to do these things over the next five years, what the total cost is, what an upfront rebate would be, and what the tax credit is. And then it shows you your final. And it, it shows you things like switching from a gas car to a used or a new EV, um, uplifting your panel from a 60 amp to a 200, the wiring, going from a gas range to an induction, the gas furnace to the heat pump. Um, this was last year's, and so some of these new state programs aren't on here from the rebate, and the estimated rebate is, is what's on here, but like the, for a, a lower income to go from a a gas heater, I'm sorry, it was just right on here. To go from a gas furnace to a central heat pump, if you're in the mid tier, it's $12,000 and you could get approximately 50% of that off in the rebate and then another 1800 so it ended up costing you 4200 So it's good information if you're trying to consider stuff. Which over time you will make up for in lower utility purposes. Uh, Absolutely. Costs. And then the second handout we have, these are QR codes to the Clean Energy Resource Team's website where you can find everything you want to know about the Inflation Reduction Act. You can find how to schedule an, a home energy audit through the energy squad that Excel has. And, and you're right, if you are in the low income side, it's free. And if you're in the middle, I think generally this Excel will charge you 100 bucks for a home energy audit. You can learn about tips for um, how to energy efficiency. If you're interested in solar, you can find a solar installer. There's questions to ask a solar installer. There's information about heat pumps, how to find a heat pump um, manufacturer or installer, and then comparing new and used electrics. So we have those. Did does that indicate the cost of heat pumps? Um, I, I'm not sure if that will. Okay. Okay, um, because again, there. Yeah, that's a really good handout. Yep. Yeah. So they're they're just over here. Feel free to take them. It, it helps you kind of assess, oh, which one might be the right thing to start with from a savings perspective. Yep. And check out rewiringamerica.org. And that's on the. One of the handouts we have, yeah. Yep, and you can put in your information and find out what's available for you. So very, very useful site. Yep. Other, Other questions? Okay, I have one for you. Uh, this is a fairly new program. We've only given a few presentations thus far. We have a whole bunch booked. What can we do to do it better? What would have been more helpful to you? Yes, sir. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. Thank you. Pardon? We have some here. 
Yeah, and I maybe didn't want to give them to you beforehand because you'd be reading the handout instead of listening to us, and we want you to listen to us. Okay, someone yeah. else had a thought? So I was going to say um, if you could provide a handout that encapsulates not everything, but the high points. Oh, of the whole presentation? Yeah, so just a one pager of here are the highlights. Here's you know the websites. Here's a quick example. You know, one one of the handouts I have for you does address the major differences between the rebate programs. So that's not everything you suggested, and we'll look into that. But just a quick comment. I always find it helpful to have the handout in front of me so that I can take notes on it when you're speaking. Just just a comment. Okay. I thought I heard conflicting information about whether tax credits could be carried forward. So if you've used it up this year and you have extra tax credits, can you carry it over into 2025? It's taxes? year by year. Pardon? It's year by year. So if you don't use all your credits this year, you can't apply them next year. Did I understand your question? No, let's say I have a, earned an excess of tax credits beyond oh. what I owe this year in taxes. Can I carry, let's say I owe 10000 5000 or something, and I earn 7000 of tax credits. Can I carry forward the 2000 to 2025? No, it's year by year. Yeah. So I'll do a pitch for that tax credit thing, being retired and being on a, a fixed income. Um, this year we made the decision to buy solar and we actually changed the source of our funding from a qualified account knowing we can get the tax credit and, and not from a, our Roth, which we're usually taking out because we need to keep our level income level at a certain amount for, other, for our medical insurance. So it, I strongly encourage it for those people who are retired. It's a really good retirement planning tool. Um, we're going to install this screen, and it, it'll be for this tax year, and we're taking enough out of qualified accounts to make sure that we recoup the full tax credit we can. Exactly. Yeah, and, and because we aren't yet at retirement age to get Medicare, we have to actually keep our income at a certain level to qualify for MNsure. So we're not funding the entirety of our purchase ourselves out of retirement funds, we're actually going to take a low interest loan through um, Minnesota has a program, it's called the Center for Energy and Environment, and they'll give low interest loans for solar and for energy efficiency, and then we can pay it off next year when we actually can, right, so it's all about moving money around and taking it, maximizing that tax credit, that's important. And yeah, you know, I'm reminded of something we missed in the presentation regarding electric vehicles. Um, as Don said, not every vehicle, it, well, you did cover part of this, not every vehicle is eligible. For example, last year t Teslas were. This year, no, because the batteries are manufactured in China. There's a big push for it to be domestic cars. Uh, there are still lots of cars. And if you're in the market, Google it, and you can find it. There are dozens. On the QR here is uh, eligible electric vehicles. Great. Yeah. Make it a big the one. The economics of electric vehicles, one of the best things of them uh, for electric vehicles, they cost about a dollar a gallon equivalent to drive. So if you're paying three, four dollars a gallon, driving electric is more like a dollar for the our, same distance. Yeah, our car gets the equivalent of 140 miles a gallon. Anything else? So no oil changes and, and no maintenance. Oh, yeah. The, in my car, the uh, maintenance book is six pages. You know, because it's just nothing to maintain. You know, you, you need to have the brakes cleaned every couple of years. Other than that. Um, I heard that the battery 
some of these electric that are not recyclable. Are not what? Recyclable. I heard, are they? I've heard that they are not. I don't know. That's yes, sir. That's a mixed bag. Actually, most of the time, they're still, they're still usable as an electric storage um, medium. So that some of these projects where they're storing electricity at, at a solar facility, for instance, they'll use those older batteries to do that instead of destroying them and such. Yeah, you're going to probably send it to like a salvage operation at the end of the life of the car. The salvage operation is probably going to get the most money by doing exactly that. And I also understand that the batteries are much, much longer than a typical battery. So I know Tesla has started actually mounting their batteries inside of their vehicles. It's not, you can't take it out easily because they have statistics that show you can go over 600,000 miles on that same battery. That's not a, a uncommon distance. Yeah, with Tesla, the batteries are actually thousands of little batteries like you use for hearing aids that are built right into the frame. So the battery goes and you're buying a new car. However, they estimate that the batteries last for 300,000 to 500,000 um, hours, pardon me, miles, miles. And uh, so in our case, that'd be 25 years and I don't think we have to worry about a new car. <laughs> or I will be. I'm not sure I understand your question. But the fuel source for that would be gasoline or oil, correct? But, um, I've never heard, well, it can't be electric, obviously. Um, I, Other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, sometimes you look at the, uh, when you put in a new kitchen or a new, ba a new bathroom or something like that, you know, you're, you, what you get back on that when you sell the house is, you know, you said, oh, you get 60% of it back or whatever. I was wondering, when you make these improvements like electrical boxes and, uh, and the new heating systems, is that a better, are they better paybacks or, you know, you know insulating your home than, uh, other type of improvements? I'm not or sure with how... solar panels, too. Yeah, it would certainly make a difference. It'd be a selling point. I can't address what percentage. Boy, I read the right stuff in the newspaper this morning. In 2023, installing a heat pump had an average return of 103.5%. It's about the only thing that you get more than your money back for. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey! I've also been talking to the St. Paul Real Estate Association about the need for real estate to get into the business of actually qualifying and, and qu or quantifying having solar on your rooftop. Yeah. It's, a, it's an important topic they know they need to take up, and I think once real estate agencies start taking up is when you're really going to start to see it become yeah. real a real asset. And I think that would be a big selling point. Okay, buy this house and you're going to pay half as much or whatever. Yeah. In you know, power is the house next door. Okay, so um, 
I will make a, a personal commitment. I have a gas cooktop in my house. Every time I turn it on, I can smell the chemicals. So I know it's not healthy. And the, my fan vents back into the kitchen. So it's kind of like, why run the fan even? Um, so, you know, my commitment is to look at um, changing that out to induction this year. And it probably means getting some new pots and pans, but wouldn't that be fun? And um, I believe so that's only a few hundred dollars. No? I looked well, it up somewhere and it was like five, six hundred dollars. Was I looking at the wrong thing? Yeah. yeah. So, so anyway, that is my commitment. Good for you. Um, to do that. So y'all hold me accountable. <laughs> certainly, certainly. Uh, if you have any other questions, come on up afterwards. Now, I have some reading for you. This is, and I think I'll leave it here rather than trying to pass it around. Uh, this is a high-level view of what the IRA is about. This is a chart I mentioned that compares the various rebate programs. And there's a whole bunch more over there. Yeah, and then uh, two things. If you would like to sign up to get information from the Sierra Club as it's available, this I will pass around. Um, put your name and email address. We will not send unnecessary emails. We will not ask you for money. <laughs> this is just for information. I, I just want to say, too, I, I, I feel like I'm an early adopter in a lot of this stuff, and you will find the people that sell these products help you out a lot of times because it helps with their sale. Right. So use them as a resource. There are certain car dealerships that specialize um, in selling e-cars, for example, or the rebate for a new air conditioner that's more efficient. So just use them as a resource also. I, I've been a... S I put in a solar uh, panels on my house two years ago, and I'm a solar geek. So if you want to talk to me about it anytime, I don't have time today, um, but I gladly would. And just an example, uh, my electric costs for a year is about $1,300 prior to quiet panels. Now it's about $300. And that's, that's, that's just the electric cost. I am getting incentives other incentives that help pay for the things, but that's my cost, $300 a year to run my house. Yep. Sir? I'm gonna do a, a, a call out. Mike Edlin's over here. He can talk to you please. if you're interested you. in learning more about electric vehicles. He's owned multiple types. He's taken advantage of the, uh, of the IRA and he goes to different shows. So he's there to talk to you about EVs. I can talk to you about our solar project if you're interested. Um, no. Yeah. Let me mention one thing. Uh, there's an evaluation form going around. We'd really appreciate it if you fill it out. Like I said, uh, we're kind of new at this. This is only the second one I've done. We want to do it better next time. So any feedback you have other than what you've given, please do. Thank you. You've been a very sophisticated and attentive audience. It's been a pleasure. Take care. Thank you. Climate Action Handbook next week. Please come. It's going to be a great session.